Welcome to another watercolour demo, this time featuring, featuring Alexandria in Egypt. Hello, I'm Tim Wilmot, a watercolour painter, sometime tutor, producing videos and online workshops to help you improve your paintings. And in this step-by-step -step demo, I'm going to go through the complete painting process from choosing the right subject to paint, doing the outline drawing, then various watercolour techniques like laying down a wash, doing wet in wet, and trying to create some nice tonal contrast into the scene. Also at the end, I shall be giving myself a little self-critique, try and be quite hard on myself and explain, just, just summarize and explain things that I think went all right and maybe things that didn't go so well um, for me. So the scene is Alexandra in Egypt, fairly close to the port area and a busy street scene. Unusually for this scene, the light, for me anyway, the light is coming from behind. Normally I'm looking into the light or contre jour as they say, or the light coming from the left or the light coming from the right, which creates some nice shadows and some nice silhouetted shapes which is a nice effect to have in watercolour, but this time the light is behind me and sometimes depending on the angle of the photograph could produce a fairly flat scene not too many not too many darks maybe not too many lights a lot of mid tonal values which can be quite difficult to pull off in watercolor so in this street scene i'm looking for the lights just to try and help inspire me by compensating overcoming that lighting direction well first of all we've got that light car quite difficult to do a car for me anyway quite difficult to do a car the side profile cars can sometimes be easier when they're coming directly towards you or going away from you quite simple shapes but this one um, that white car there and then if I go slightly further up this banner going across the street that is just speaking out to me as a, as another opportunity to have imagine that quite light trying to get the feeling of that cloth with these the folds in the in the material um so it's obviously been stretched um uh, between the two sides of the street but that could be quite light against the darker background of these buildings a little bit of a challenge with those buildings with perspective trying to get the angles right of uh, all of these these different stages there um, as we come down to ground level uh, we have some figures as well to contend with I think I need something over here on the left hand side a figure maybe walking into the scene just to balance out we've got a lot happening over on the right hand side but not a lot on the left we've got this we've got a few lovely palm trees against the sky so uh, I'll be going through that my take on painting a palm tree and then receding into the distance we've got these background buildings trying to push that the the, the background back uh, if that's the right word trying to make sure that how I paint these buildings the values I choose it pushes them back not brings them too far forwards and finally, the, well, maybe second for last, the road surface, trying to reduce a little bit of texture there. It looks to me like it's a sort of concrete type material, but trying to introduce a little bit of the feeling of the texture, the lightness of uh, the surface and the sky. Finally, the sky, well, fairly plain sky, good chance to lay down a fairly flattish wash. So that's the scene then. Let's see how I get on, starting with the all important drawing stage. I've got to get the drawing right before I go on to do any painting. If the drawing's wrong, then for me anyway, uh, the painting can rarely improve from there. I'm using Saunders Waterford watercolour paper. It's 15 inches by 11 inches. And this is cold press 
300 grams tape down just excuse the autofocus kicking into action and again it might settle down once I start painting with a with a blank page it tends to go all over the place and I'm starting off with my 3B pencil drawing in just the outline shapes starting with the tall building on the right hand side and getting in those lines correctly of the various levels. I don't tend to take a lot of time doing the initial drawing. I think that the, the longer I take, the tighter I'm going to be in the eventual painting process. I want to keep it fairly loose. I'm As I'm drawing, I'm connecting everything, rarely lifting the pencil from the surface, just skirting, skipping around all over the the paper getting in those main shapes so I've done that banner almost in the middle of the paper and on the left hand side there's a wall coming in from the left that's facing us now that car that side profile of that car trying to get that right not to make it too short not too long getting the wheelbase right the distance between the wheels getting the getting all the proportions right of the wheels to the body of the car and that's going to be important that's going to be an important object there on that right hand side bit of lightness against the dark a relatively dark background rear wheel Spending a bit more time on this indication of where the shadows might be. There's just a little bit of a shadow. As I say, the light's coming from the, almost behind me of my right shoulder. And so there will be a, just a tiny shadow coming out from that car on the left-hand side. That's gonna be the end of the wall. Now, the palm tree or palm trees on the left hand side, a larger one nearest to us and just an indication of where the canopy is going to be with all of those palm fronds, almost a half circle in a way with the center uh, come, of course coming out from the crown little vertical on that wall. There's a spiky plant on the left hand side and a figure. I'm going to have this figure walking into the scene. Try and get a sense of movement with the with the position of the legs. And a couple of figures venturing out onto the road. A, a male, we'll have a male and a female figure just coming off the pavement, almost in front of the car. Hopefully the car has stopped. We'll imagine the car has stopped and it's letting the, the figures pass over and a continuation of a lower building on the f on this immediate right side so that the taller one is going to be darker a sort of light reddish color and then the one on the right is slightly lighter strengthen up some of these edges on the car that's the undercarriage front of the car we just see the front grille of the car just a tiny bit and the other area where cars can sometimes go wrong are the windscreens trying to make them either they're too large I find when I when I look at 
either paintings of my own that haven't gone so well or to be critical of the way some other people might do their cars. Sometimes the windows could be either too large or too small or the, the corners too rounded. So it's another little tricky area ready to get a car looking right, looking realistic. Bit of detail on the edge of the pavement. On the right hand side there, I'm gonna keep that fairly loose, maybe the indication of a, some figures, other figures over there. Now in the middle, in the distance, going down the street, there are some more buildings. There's a taller one just to the left of the center. And, and then over on the left hand side, there is a really distant building, maybe a few more levels, just increase the number of levels on that building. That's the drawing stage done then. As I say, it does need to be correct for me before I go on to the next uh, next stage, which is starting to lay down a wash. Now I will be pretty much covering all of the paper, except that in this one, there are quite a lot of lighter areas. The, the wall facing us, the foreground with the road, and obviously the car and the banner. I'm gonna start, first of all, by pre-wetting the top half of the paper. And I'm doing this so that I can lay down a fairly even wash, but it's gonna be a graded wash. It's gonna be darker at the top and a little bit lighter as I come down to the horizon. And it's easier to get that graded wash if the paper is damp, it does help having a large brush as well when you're laying down a wash. A lot easier to lay down this, this even wash so that we're not seeing any brush marks. So an even application of, of, wa of water there, clear water, could use a big brush, could use a sponge, something just to lay that down. You can see there's a slight glisten on the paper. It's still got that fairly moist feeling to it and start laying down the color now. It will dry a little bit lighter than this. I am going pretty much over everything in that top half with the exception of coming down to the, the light wall, but pretty much covering that entire top half and going over the tall building on the right hand side. Now, on the right hand side, lay down the base color for the buildings. Where I am now in that top right corner, that is gonna be the end color of that building. So that is facing the light, the light coming over my right shoulder. That's going to be that color, all right? But I will introduce a few little darker shadows into that area. And then coming down, into the lower part of the scene on that right hand side and going over the going over the banner as well. I don't want the banner bright white or just uh, it's a sort of off white color, but lay down just a base color there for the banner and the buildings. Just take off some of the white of the paper. It's gonna go quite light or a lot lighter than this. And also down on the road surface as well. Any sort of color really down here. And as I lay down this color, 
brush strokes in different directions. Maybe a little bit of the paper unpainted, some dry brush marks as well. With the slightly rough surface I've got, it will leave little sparkles of white paper showing through. And the brush is quite well loaded with paint as I go over. I'll maybe go a bit darker on the right hand side. Brush strokes different directions. Careful to paint around the bottom edge of that light car. Preserve the whiteness of that. Pick up a bit of cerulean blue. Bit of burnt sienna. Let me go through the colours on my on my palette. So my colours, my paints are handmade, professional grade watercolour paints from a UK supplier called Jackman's Art Materials, not to be confused with Jackson's, the online art retailer, but uh, my paints are from Jackman's Art Materials. The colours I'm using very rarely change. I, I, I've kept the same colours for a long, long time now. Just getting out the hairdryer and excuse again the erratic autofocus kicking into action as I'm moving around. It, it doesn't know whether to focus on the hairdryer or the paper. Anyway, back to the colours. Starting from the top, neutral tint, burnt umber, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, I'm working with a new palette. My old Holbein metal palette gave up the ghost. The, I'd, I'd had it about, well, over 10 years. And the enamel eventually went on it. If you've seen some older videos, you will have seen the, the gradual deterioration, particularly in the mixing wells. You, you lose the, uh, the enamel and it, it sort of looks like a rusty, rusty blob in the middle. Uh, doesn't really affect the painting, but obviously you want a, a nice white surface so that you can, as you're mixing these colours, you know, you've got a half an idea of what the colour is going to be like when it hits the paper. So anyway, Holbein have discontinued that particular model of palette that I, I quite liked. And this one is a replica, uh, which I found online on Amazon. I'm not sure who the manufacturer is, but this one's got, how many has it got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. You've got 15, 15 wells down the left-hand side. And the, the important thing is that the right-hand side of those little wells is open. So I can just drag, being right hand, I can just drag the paint across the top of the surface of that uh, blob of color. And I'm just sort of lightly picking up with a generally a soft brush, just lightly pick up a little bit of paint, which I think works quite well. Rather than having all of the well enclosed on four sides, there's an open side to it. I've got, I've actually got a little gap there where I'm about to get a bright green. I think I'm going to experiment with some bright greens when I'm doing any sort of foliage nice bright uh, if i'm doing this any sort of bright young foliage with the light behind me that would uh, that would need a sort of yellowy green so that's going to go in that spare slot there right color so yes yeah, so colors neutral tint burnt umber burnt sienna yellow ochre virgin green cobalt green cerulean blue cobalt blue ultramarine blue alas alas and crimson Cadmium red. Now I used to have a light red. What I've just picked up there used to be light red. That now is an English oxide, as, as Jackman's Art Materials calls it. It's a very nice red. It's a sort of earthy, clayish, terracotta type of red. Um, pretty close to the light red. I like it. It's maybe slightly opaque, but it works really well. Now, with the background I'm doing, 
I need to, as I said earlier, I need to make sure it's not going too dark. So on the, on the left hand side with that far building, keeping that quite light and leaving exposed a few little horizontal lines, which could be the light hitting some balconies or something like that. And as I'm moving over to the right and coming closer towards me, I'm intensifying the color, making it a little bit stronger and a little bit darker. But on the left hand side, that's furthest away, quite light. It will dry. The paint will dry a little bit lighter. So you've always got to think uh, to compensate that. I've got this flat edge with my squirrel mop brush and just now with some short horizontal strokes creating this narrow building almost in the middle of the scene. Jagged edge could be uh, balconies and little bits of uh, the architecture just as exposed, uh, highlighted, silhouetted against the, the brighter sky beyond. As you can see, uh, quite a, a nice edge. I've got the brush now. I just picked out one of the, one of the hairs uh, of my brush just came out there. Just need to make sure that's out and doesn't deposit itself in the in an inappropriate position on the paper. Now I'm nearing the banner going across the street, which I I laid down a little bit of colour to it just to take off the white of the paper. The, the brighter colour, the brighter colours are going to be that figure, the brighter white is going to be that figure and the white car. I need to be careful painting around this banner. I did, of course, draw the edge of it, but I want to give the feeling of a, the material and it's being stretched. It might sag a little bit in the middle. So top and bottom, I just need to be careful with that edge, painting around that. And then underneath the banner, I'll be painting down to the tops of the cars coming up the street. Quite a busy street, little bit of a traffic jam forming on the right hand side, but a, a long column of cars and taxis coming up there. Just below the banner, there's a nice bit of shadow coming across the street. And I've gone a bit darker as well below the banner because that's closer to the street level. I'm going to go a bit darker down there compared to higher up. Continue over tops of the cars, painting around the rooftops of those cars, little indents where one car finishes and the other car shape starts. Just continue on some of the colors. I got lavender and quinacridone gold along the bottom. And also a blob of white gouache as well on the right hand side, which I, I very rarely use. Well, I, I will be using a little bit of white paint out of the tube, but I do, do have a little bit there on the palette just to mix that with something where I might need some sort of lighter color using that white gouache as a base with some other color, maybe yellow ochre or something like that. This is where, doing this building, this is where it's important. I had to get those angles right of that building. And I'm using my brush strokes along the lines of these levels coming down and creating that sort of serrated edge on the left-hand side where these balconies are jutting out um, and being silhouetted against the sky. I'm trying to get the same sort of 
thickness of these lines, these bands coming down. Doesn't matter if I leave little bits of the paper unpainted, as with the background, that could be little objects catching the light, the tops of the balcony or a wall or something like that. So within reason, that doesn't matter, but fairly solid covering of that wall there, mixing up different shades of red. It's generally quite a warmish color though, this building, maybe a bit cooler in places. So I can just insert a little bit of a blue just to give me a little bit of coolness to that, to that counter that red. Now I'm trying to go a little bit more horizontal with the perspective now. Make sure the sides are as vertical as I can. down to the top of the banner, try and get in a nice edge there, a hard edge. And that's gonna be a good change in value from the dark to the light. And then dark below the banner, and then a little bit of light with the road and that white car. And then a little bit, just a slight change to a slightly, a little bit darker on the road surface. I'm going to have some shadows coming in from the right hand side, just to give the impression of something there over my right shoulder that's creating a bit of shadow coming across the scene. Top of the car. Like the banner, quite important to get that right. The building now on the extreme right is a little bit lighter. So I'm now painting in the, the recess of these different levels and balconies. And this again is an important area to make sure the drawing is right and the perspective is right because being lighter, it's gonna show up a lot more than the building before if, if I got something, not got the, any of those angles not quite right. Also, being on the right hand side, being near the edge of the paper, I can, go, I can go a little bit looser with my painting style at dry brush mark. Alter the angle of the brush. down to the street level, round the back of this car, top of the car, and then the boot of the car. While that building there is still damp, I can just go back into it with a few little dabs of paint just to create a few little blooms and some just a bit of texture in there as long as that color is sort of sympathetic to to that building not too different and just watching the thickness of that of that paint as well if i 
if the paint was too watery, I would create blooms. If it's darker, being on the moist surface, it's just going to create a darker area with a soft edge. So on the street level on the right hand side, quite dark in there, a few little horizontal shadows being created by something. Just leave it up to the viewer's imagination what, what that might be. Perhaps just a few little sort of verticals there to create the impression of some figures. Up in the top right corner, there's a shadow. I'm not sure if it's a lift shaft or something like that, but some windows down the right hand side. And this shadow. Another sort of strong, I think every painting needs strong verticals or strong horizontals just to create a it's another dimension to the painting and that was um i think i needed something over there be too be too empty and bland if i didn't um, have that in that top right corner now for i've done the done the warms now i need to put in some foliage some of the green so cadmium yellow and viridian green to try and get that cool green of the palm tree fronds they're sort of they're sort of date palms and then coming down to the street there's some very dry plants down there dry conditions there may be a little bit parched and a bit of grass coming out from the side wall in towards the road almost like a little triangle again that creates another bit of tonal contrast between the lighter wall and that darker area but it does need a little bit of greenery in there just to add a bit more interest and I think without those trees it would look a little bit too too stark and too bare so I think those trees when I put them in that's going to give a nice balance to it So cool green, there's a spiky plant growing on the road. I'm not sure if it's a, a yucca or something like that, or a clump of grasses, but something over there on the left-hand side, just to balance out that side. I'll add in some darker shadows into that on the left hand side shortly a bit of cobalt green cadmium yellow trying to just get that sort of right shade of green for these palm fronds I have used various brushes, brush types for doing palm fronds. This time I'm just using this mop brush again with that flat edge and almost dry brush marks starting generally from the crown and in as few a strokes as I can, I don't want to overdo it, but creating the shape of these fronds. I'm not painting in every single leaf. They're, they're a fair distance away. So I'm just trying to think of the overall shape of those fronds and this canopy, almost like these leaf 
PTO, are they called PTOs or these these fronds? They're they're sort of erupting from the center. The the, the new growth is at the top there. They're fairly close together, maybe quite narrow, and then the older fronds are down down uh, at the lower part of this canopy. They are fairly symmetrical, but I don't want to be perfectly symmetrical. So not always the same number of fronds either side, if you see what I mean, trying to induce a little bit of randomness to that and, and a small bit of imperfection. This row of palm trees just recedes into the distance. So I'm continuing this green thing further on down just weaken it weaken that mix a little bit make it a bit cooler as i go down into the distance connect with the tall building in the middle a little bit bluer a little bit cooler down there in the distance and connect with the buildings in the middle. A few little fronds extending out to the left. Just checking it for that symmetry, I don't want it too lopsided. Just to mention a couple of activities I have going on a fairly regular basis. I have almost on a monthly frequency online workshops where we choose a different subject every month and this is open to anyone. More information on that is in the description of this video and also you can go to crowdcast.io c-r-o-w-d-c-a-s-t dot i-o slash Tim Wilmot, my name T-I-M-W-I-L-M-O-T and you will see full details of the up and coming workshops up there and then Patreon, I've got a Patreon site, think of it like an online club and you can be, you'll be very welcome, if you're not a member already, you'll be very welcome, welcome to uh, join and there's various different membership levels getting different things from me and the main thing we do there on patreon is another monthly painting so i give a live demo to my members and that will be the topic the project for that month again it will be different scenes landscapes street scenes maybe similar to this just ordinary scenes at the moment, I'm tending to choose scenes shared by my members. So we do have an image sharing service up there on Patreon. And if you're ever lacking any inspiration of what shall I paint today? Well, there's, there's a stack load of photos that we're all sharing there for our little community to, to paint. And I choose my monthly demos from that so got to patreon again the link for that is in the description of the video but just got to patreon.com and you'll see full details of all the activities and things and live streams that we have and online meetups on patreon i'm now back to the painting i'm now using a smaller synthetic brush this is a size 8 synthetic round brush and i'm now adding in 
darker details. I'm now trying to create more of the, the form of these objects, the cars going down the middle of the street, the taxis, a couple of taxis in there, those yellow, bright yellow bonnets, and finally to this car, which I have to be ever so careful with. I'm imagining it's stationary. It's letting these two pedestrians cross the road and it's at a halt. But it can still, even though I got the drawing right, it can still go wrong where those wheels are. If I just had in a little bit too much detail to the wheels and there's a balance to it really I want to keep it fairly loose not too tight and as I painted around the top of the car with those dark shadows to create the the top edge of the car now on the bottom I'm going in with a darker value these darker shadows starting from the the left hand side so the the light over my right shoulder, pushing that shadow slightly to the left of that car, um, underneath the car, between the two wheels, and just a little bit of, just a few strokes to define the back wheel and the back of the car, just a tiny bit of like the windscreens, try to get the size right and the edges right, not, not too round edges, not too large, not too small. So we're now starting to see those values, these the, the values of the, the lighter objects of the banner, those cars coming up the street, this bright white car that we're seeing the side of it. To a lesser extent, we've got, or I've got the figure walking into the scene. On the left-hand side, we'll have that figure I'll have that figure with a light top. I could I could go in quite dark with that figure, but I'll, I'll keep it fairly light, the top of the figure, maybe slightly darker trousers for the figure on the left. Now, the two coming across the road, I'll have the gentleman with a red, a reddish top, and maybe he'll be carrying a bag or something like that. And then the lady, just connect the two together and down to the bottom. Legs, not too, not too detailed with the legs. Keep it fairly loose. There's the rest of the lady. And then shadows for them. Bit of cobalt blue. Connect the two together as well. Use my finger just to either lift off a little bit of the paint or merge in. Just gently tease the paint together or to get a softer edge as well. A bit more of a definition to the grassy patch behind them and this figure striding into into the center of the scene
bit of shadow for the figure. Connect with the feet. And when I've got this brush, using the flat edge of this brush, these sort of rectangles going down that are marking the side of the pavement. It does need something there. It sort of shows the, the height of the pavement, perhaps. It's above the road surface, just a little bit of outline or edge to the, the very bottom of the pavement. Back to the background and a suggestion of some balconies on that background building. And then a few windscreens in the cars, just in that car park. Tops of the cars. And also a bit of detail for the buildings in the middle. Not too much, not too dark. To find that left edge a bit more on that on that building with the, the light coming from the right, bit of shadow on the left. And lots of these brush marks there, fairly dry, not too much water on the brush for them, so you get a, a very lighter grey. Few little verticals. It's quite versatile this brush or brush of this type because it, as long as it's got a good point you can use it for finer details. Here I'm I'm in dangerous territory doing the hubs, these the wheel arches and wheel hubs don't want to go too detailed. And a few fine lines down the side of the car, just some trim or whatnot there. little bit uh, of darkness on the windscreens just to give the impression of inside inside the car a few more lines on those background cars so Amazon crimson ultramarine blue neutral tint quite dark I, I very rarely or I don't think I use neutral tint neat, neat. I would always add it to some other color like ultramarine blue or allergen crimson. So it's not too black or charcoaly gray. Now coming down this building, there are some darker marks. So I'm just now laying in these these shapes basically as I'm looking at the photograph I just see these shapes coming down another sort of vertical interest to this building in between the levels
picked up a bit of burnt umber there as well. Dry brush at, th at this stage, not too much water there. Some darks on that right hand side, not too many, don't want to. It's on the right hand side, I don't want it to be too detailed. It's important to have behind that banner some continuation so it looks like the, the building behind it is all one building. So, which I think I've sort of got with the, the values. Darker edge to the top. Now with my, back to my mop brush again, my size 14 squirrel mop brush, try and create these shadows. I, I just need something coming out from that right hand side. Not too long as shadows because of the time of day, but just something filling that that bottom right corner, just adding another dimension to the foreground. Not too detailed. And then also across the, the road, I'm using the brush really gently now, just barely touching the surface. And there's not too much paint on the brush, just creating some very faint Gray lines. Time for the tree trunks now, and starting from the top of the crown of the tree, it's a little bit thicker up there, connecting it with the start of the fronds and then bring that down. A bit of lost and found where a bit of light comes across the tree trunks or some other foliage down to the bottom there and then have the other tree trunks not all strictly strictly speaking parallel have a few different jaunty angles to them some folds in the banner Now, writing on the banner, it can be anything. I'm just really making it up as I go along here. Just something to indicate some writing and going across. There's some shadow on the wall, like a almost like a little triangle in there. I need to just add a, a bit of shadow to other, other areas of that wall as well.
little shopping bag for the male figure and the female figure. I'm well and truly into the, the detail stage now with smaller brushes, progressively smaller brushes. This is a small or smallish, I call it a rigger brush. It's from Lebensen. It's a handmade brush, bamboo handle and synthetic hairs. It's, uh, I think Lebensen call it a small, soft, white, synthetic. The the brush hairs are about oh, nearly an inch long, maybe three quarters of an inch, but it's slightly springy and you get really fine lines with it, really good for doing railings and ropes and wires and things like that. Almost, you can also create lines almost to the, the thickness of a hair. Very, very good brush. One of my go-to brushes for doing these lines. And there are a vertical lamp post in the distance. For the bigger lamp post, I do need to go to a slightly, I'll go back to my size eight brush. And try and get this parallel to the edge of the building behind top of the post and the actual lamp keep it nice and simple just a triangle really These darks now are almost pure pigment, very little water in it, which is my normal process. At the beginning, there's a lot of water to paint ratio. And then as I come towards the end of the painting, there's more, there's more paint to water. The, the paint is a little bit thicker. At this stage of the painting, then I'm pulling things together. I am, and of course, the, the difficult thing is knowing when to stop with a painting. So I'm, generally speaking, just looking for little extra things to do, like there, rubbing out with, particularly with the car, rubbing out any pencil lines where I could I could erase them and that gives me a sharper edge still, hopefully with the darkness behind trying to increase those values and thinking about the edges as well. Now with a little bit of white paint and the Lebensen rigger brush again, little things like the rope holding up this banner I'm not sure where it's, I'm not sure exactly where it's attached to, who cares, but just the impression of some supporting lines there, top of the banner, bottom of the banner, just drag it down into somewhere, doesn't matter where. And maybe not, a, maybe not a continuous line, it could be a little dotted line, little gaps within that line. That's sometimes a bit easier to do rather than a, a long, if you've got to draw out a long line, maybe just have dashes. It makes it easier to do one dash than, than just adjust the, the brush position, then put in another, another little, little dash. Put in some verticals, something catching the light, posts in the background, bits of highlights for figures. Just emphasize some of those a bit more. 
really sort of pulling it, pulling it together. Bit of shadow behind that spiky thing on the pavement. Not sure if it's a yucca or something like that, but it has to survive the uh, dry conditions here, dry and dusty. Bit a bit more of a shadow on the ledge of that wall. Bit more detail to the wall. Also on the road, also on the road, they are connecting the figure with the bottom of that wall. Smudge something out if, if I've overdone it. Now on this road, it's got these sort of sections of concrete and I'm just, with those lines, that that hopefully just helps lead the viewer a little bit more into the scene with the angles of those lines. A bit more to that car there. And a few little finishing touches. There are some lines up there on the, the right hand side of that taller building. Just give the impression of a few levels up there. Strengthen up some of those levels as well. my vertical and we're done as I normally do then just to wrap things up a critique of my painting so this is the end of painting Alexandria in Egypt thinking about values and the lighting from a tricky position let's go back to the source photo lighting from a tricky position over my right shoulder Busy street scene near the port area in Egypt and a sort of fairly ordinary street scene in Egypt with these buildings, lots of interesting geometric shapes. And as I say, values, thinking about the darkness of the buildings and then hitting those bands of light, those areas of light, those shapes of light, the banner, that banner the tops of the cars, this white car, this lovely old car here and the white wall, trying to get the, the colour of the concrete road as well. Uh, so that's my source photo. Let's go back to my painting. So I think I could have gone a little bit bluer with the sky as a suggestion to myself, as a memo to myself. Could have gone a little bit more intense, certainly in the top portion of the sky. Although that would have, let me just go back to, yeah, so that sky is darker than the road, isn't it? So I could have gone a little bit bluer, a little bit darker with the sky. And that might have made the, the lighter is just a little bit lighter. That contrast between dark and light can make the lighter things appear lighter. As regards the rest of the painting, I think I've achieved my aim of the, the these values, the banner there, the white car. I'm actually quite pleased with the way the car appeared. I, I always um, have difficulty, particularly with these older cars, sometimes I can make them a little bit too stretched out or too, too narrow, too, um, too high. So I think I've got the proportions all right on that one. And then the figures, perhaps I could have added a bit more definition to these figures, a little bit more light around them, possibly on the face 
or their clothing, but they, I think they look all right. Loose, quite happy with the banner as well, the way that turned out. Looks like a little bit of material stretched across the road. You can see my, you can see my erratic brush marks, all those shapes there of the background buildings, just, just touching them um, lightly with a, with a brush to create those, those marks and uh, the impression of windows and architectural details. Might have gone a little bit too dark with the, the lines on that building. As I said, I want to try and push that back. I think the overall value of that building is all right there, but maybe just a tiny bit too dark with that top bit and those lines. Then coming down to the left-hand side, yeah, figure looks all right. Quite happy with that. Got a sense of movement walking into the scene. Not sure where that white blob is that left. Obviously left a little bit of the paper unpainted. Uh, but quite happy with also with the shadows coming over from the right side. I think it needed something like that. Otherwise, it would have been a bit too, a bit too light and bland in that in that lower foreground. And then the final little bit of touch up with a small brush and a rigger brush getting in those those fine lines. So there we are then, an exercise in values, the lighting coming from a tricky a tricky angle, uh, not uh, contre jour in this example, and quite a complex background, all those shapes as well, trying to keep it, trying to simplify the scene, basically. Hope you liked it. Catch up with you on the next video.